Hey everyone, Graham here from TheRecordingRevolution.com, and you're watching 5 Minutes to a Better Mix. Of course, we're looking at 31 mixing tips in 31 days. And I got a little one for you today on kick drum bass guitar problems. Um, if you've ever mixed kick and bass guitar, you, you might run into those mixes where they're just fighting each other. They might sound good by themselves, but what use is that to you when they need to sound good together in the mix? And I get totally frustrated when I can't get them to play well together. There's a couple of things you can do to make that happen. And here's just one to throw into your bag of tricks, and that's using some side chain compression. Now, a lot of people do this. This isn't anything new. But if you haven't been aware of this, this is a great little thing to, to keep in your back pocket. Um, what we're going to do here is uh, basically use the kick drum to trigger a compressor on the bass guitar to, in essence, turn down the bass guitar just a hair every second that a kick drum hit happens and just for that brief moment so that it might free up some room, some sonic room for that moment for you and I to perceive the kick drum. You'll still hear the bass, but we're just leaving some room for the kick drum. Let me show you an example how to set this up. We've got basically your, your bass track right here, and you wanna get a compressor on it. Here's just the stock compressor in Pro Tools. And what you need to do is send something to its key input. So this compressor has to have one thing. Uh, oh, that's the caveat. It has to have a key input, a side chain. And a lot of compressors do. Maybe you've never looked at it. Maybe you don't know what it is. But it's really a cool thing to allow tracks to interact with other tracks. So what I've got is up here on my kick drum. These are two kick tracks, but I have them bust together here. So it's one aux. I basically have created a send for my kick drum and I've sent it to an open bus, bus 11, just a mono bus. And uh, I've made it pre-fader, brought up the fader here to zero. So that means that anytime the kick drum plays, it's sending a copy of itself full volume to bus 11, which does nothing at first. It's just floating out there in space. So that's the first step is to send your kick drum on a bus pre-fader, or you could experiment with post-fader, but I keep it pre-fader. Uh, and then set up a compressor on your bass track, which is here. And you set its key input to, you guessed it, that same bus, in our case, bus 11. So it will be looking for an input, not from the bass guitar, which it would normally do, but it's going to look for its input on bus 11, which would be the kick drum. Okay? And what then you finally have to do is set the side chain to be the key input which is right here. So telling it, hey, I want you to actually look at that key input, bus 11, to trigger the compressor. So then what this is going to do is every time the kick drum plays, it's bypassed right now, but every time the kick drum plays, you're going to see compression happening on the bass. Yes, we Kick drum and bass are playing that together, but that compression is happening from the kick drum. So what I'm going to do is bring in this compressor. Here's in solo with the bass and the drums. There we go. And bring it on and off. No compression. Compression. Now this is really subtle, but you're hearing that kick drum basically turn up in volume seemingly every time I turn on the compressor on the bass guitar. So we're on the bass guitar track, but what we're listening to is how the kick drum increases in volume or perceived volume, because now there's a little bit more space. I'm knocking off maybe 3 dB of gain here on the compressor, but it's a subtle little trick that you can do, if, especially in the mix, that might be able to bring out more kick drum. So here it is in the mix without compression on the bass, and then we'll bring it in. Yes, we have a great high priest in Christ who is able to sympathize with our weaknesses. He was tempted yet without sin. So with joy. And 
just opens up some more space, just a little bit more room for your kick drum. Again, all the subtle things help. A little bit here, a little bit there. Hundreds of tiny little improvements can make for a massive improvement. Try it on your next track, see if it helps. Again, this is Graham at therecordingrevolution.com. I hope to see you around here tomorrow.